Welcome back. Uh, let's talk about the Golgi structure a little bit and we're going to come back to look at more functions of the EAR, ER and the Golgi and we'll specifically look at glycosylation and trafficking. So we'll come back to some more important mechanisms around the functions of the ER and the Golgi but for now we're just looking at a general overview of structure and function. So that being said let's take a look at the Golgi. The Golgi is a, it's a, it's a series or a set of flattened membrane bounded cisternae um, and then the series of cisternae is usually three to eight um, structures and that's called a Golgi stack. Now some cells will have just one or two stacks, one large stack or a few smaller stacks. Um, other types of cells, especially cells involved in secretion, for example, they can have hundreds, in some cases thousands of stacks. And so again, you're going to see relationships between structure or number of structures, I guess, and the function or the type of the cell. So one of the kind of important things about the Golgi is that it's functionally and physically, in some cases, linked to the ER. Functionally is going to be the most important, um, and we'll talk about that more when we talk about trafficking and um, glycosylation as processes that the Golgi in the ER are involved in. So um, in the Golgi, um, glycoproteins and membrane lipids that are coming in from the ER undergo further processing and they're sorted for packaging um, uh, into transport vesicles and so those transport vesicles will be sent to other places in the cell and so the Golgi really plays the central role in membrane and protein trafficking in eukaryotic cells. And remember this is an organelle so this is, um, is unique to eukaryotic cells. Um, and so there are a lot of vesicles arriving from the ER and, and then moving around the Golgi and departing from the Golgi going to other destinations in the cell. So that could be uh, becoming, uh, becoming peroxisomes via fusion with endosomes, late endosomes, could be secreting proteins um, at the cell membrane or inserting proteins into the cell membrane. Um, so in terms of the actual structure, you can see a kind of a lot of the vesicles, the, the transitional and the transport vesicles carrying materials to and from and around the Golgi. The, um, uh, the Golgi can be kind of split into, into three main structural regions, uh, the CGN or the Cis-Golgi network, and you can't see that necessarily too clearly on, on this diagram. So let's look over here on the electron micrograph, the transmission electron micrograph. The, the Cis-Golgi network tends to be proximal to the nuclear envelope or the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is the receiving phase for vesicles coming from the endoplasmic reticulum. Then there are medial cisternae, so there's a stacks in the middle of the structure. And then the trans-Golgi network, that's the face which is going to be releasing vesicles, and that's going to be closest to the cell periphery, um, basically uh, away from the, uh, the, the nuclear envelope and the, the endoplasmic reticulum. So that gives you an idea of the anatomy of the Golgi. Um, and so uh, one interesting question is, is how do lipids and proteins that arrive at the ER and then leave the ER move from one side, the cis-Golgi network, through the medial cisternae and then out of the Golgi at the trans-Golgi network. Now there are two general models for this, so I'm going to make this kind of a binary thing, but the important thing is, is to, to at least just understand and appreciate, and we don't need to look at all the evidence for this, but the reality is that even though there are these two models that we can talk about, the stationary cisternae model and the cisternal match model, the reality is that it's probably some kind of hybrid and probably there are elements of both these models actually happening in cellular systems. Um, so there are the, these two models, the stationary cisternae model we'll look at first and then the cisternal maturation model. So on the left here you've got the stationary cisterna model. And so is what is happening here, if I can get a cursor, is that um, vesicles are arriving from the endoplasmic reticulum. And so the vesicles bud from the ER, so they're bringing membrane lipids, they're bringing um, transmembrane proteins from the ER membrane, and they're bringing soluble proteins from the ER lumen. And so those vesicles then fuse with these plates, the cisternae and the cis-Golgi network. Um, and then new vesicles bud 
and then fuse with the next cisternal stack down. And so then vesicles then form and bud with the next stack down. Vesicles bud and fuse with the next cisternal stack down. So the vesicles are budding from the cisternal stacks and moving towards the Trans-Golgi network um, through the, the, uh, the medial cisternal stacks until eventually membrane vesicles that bud from the Trans-Golgi network will be going to the final destination in the cell and here we're just showing exocytosis as an example. And so um, that's called the, the stationary cisternal model because the cisterna kind of stay in place and, and vesicles do the movement. The other model is called the cisternal maturation model, where um, is what happens there. The, the, the Golgi can be, the, the cisterna can be seen as transient structures, and is what happens is they gradually mature and become medial cisterna from the cis Golgi network, ultimately becoming trans Golgi network cisternae. So what's happening here is that the cis Golgi network side, vesicles from the ER are fusing together to actually form the cisternae. Then that cisternae matures through the medial cisternal stack until it eventually becomes part of the trans Golgi network where it fragments and releases vesicles. And all the time this is happening, new membranes are fusing from the ER to produce new cis Golgi network. So it's kind of like a rotating or you know a, 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 a revolving system, a revolving door system where things are coming in at one side but being released at the other. And so it's continuous flux of movement of the cisternal stacks through the Golgi. Now bear in mind, it's probably not one or other of these. There are going to be elements of, of both of these seen in, in live fluorescence imaging studies where you can actually watch molecules that have been fluorescently labeled moving through the, um, through the, uh, through the Golgi network or through the Golgi structure. So that's how one couple of models about how we get material through. So on that slide, you'll have, that last slide, you'll have seen this word retrograde transport and anterograde transport. So movement of material that is going from kind of uh, the cis Golgi network through the middle through the medial cisternae to the trans Golgi network, ultimately towards let's say the plasma membrane. That's called anterograde transport. So that's towards the exterior of the cell. Um, uh, and so that you can obviously envision with exocytosis when material moves through the vesicles, um, through, the, through the Golgi, and then eventually is released from the cell. That would be anterograde transport. Now, retrograde transport is equally important. That's where material kind of flows backwards through the Golgi or from the cell surface. Um, and so this is important because if we've got um, anterograde transport, and material is moving through the Golgi. If we've got budding of vesicles from the cis, from the medial uh, stacks into the trans Golgi network, that means that membrane is being depleted from the cis Golgi face and the medial cisternal stacks, and would all end up in the trans Golgi network. So we've got to send membrane back, and we've got to send proteins that have come through the stack that need to function in the cis and medial Golgi. And so there's got to be a flux of material back into the medial structures and into the cis face structures. And so retrograde transport is all about moving, it's all about balancing the flow of lipid and protein in the anterograde direction with flow in the retrograde direction. So it's basically sending material back that needs to be used in the membrane of the of the cis and medial structures. Um, and that means you can just keep the Golgi processing materials through. So um, that's a little bit about introduction of the structure and uh, the process by which things move through the Golgi. Um, and uh, we'll start taking a look at glycosylation when we come back. I'll see you soon.